I'm here with none other than Andrew Ashby, the tavern owner of the Geek Together Tavern in Provo, Utah. We have just come off the high of an incredible, incredible couple of weeks. And I wanted to talk a lot about the journey that brought us here. How are you doing this morning, Andrew? Dax, thank you. I'm doing, I'm doing great. I'm pretty nervous, but thanks for being on the show. Okay. So I'm sure people who are watching the broadcast are wondering, where are you right now? What's behind you? What's going on? Give us some context. All right. So I'm in our gaming tavern here in Provo. That's, it doesn't look super pretty. This is the business wall, but right behind me, you can kind of see our mead and our 3D printers over here. And you can see kind of over here is our gaming area. So, I mean, if you're just listening to audio, you can't see anything. But, <laughs> but you can use your imagination. d d is an imaginative game. Or better yet, you can come visit. Please. Thank you. <laughs> so where did this idea of opening a D&D tavern start? Where did it originate? What's the origin story? Origin of the tavern. Great question. So I'm a nerd. Big nerd. All right. No surprise. Raised in a nerdy family. And we started our own small local business. And it was really, really small. We, we started by selling farmer's markets. Uh, we had a little Etsy shop for a bit. We, it, was, it was all hobby. It was just like, hey, you know, I bought a 3D printer. Brother started watching YouTube videos and learning how to make leather armor. And my mom could sew. So we just started making some stuff and having fun doing really tiny things. You know, we'd make, you know, we'd make $100 on a night. And we'd be like, wow, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, um, we can have dinner now. Exactly, and make breakfast. You know? <laughs> and then we... We got into Evermore and that was, that was a huge break. We got into Evermore. We were like one of the first merchants. I think there was, there was two or three others before us, but we got into Evermore because they were kind of looking for homemade, uh, geeky Renaissance fair items. And that was kind of what we were selling. So we started selling at Evermore and we went from making a hundred dollars to making maybe $300. And so we were like, wow, that's, you know. Maybe we have a business here. And so we worked on that for two years. Um, and then we, we got into some bigger shows. Like we did the Utah Renaissance Fair. We did next. And okay, yeah, we actually have a business. But it would be really cool to have our, our own home base where we, we could meet people. We could set up a culture. And I love game stores. I've, I've been going to stores for since I was a child. And so... I thought, man, it would be really cool to have our own game store. But instead of doing like the normal game store stuff, let's do like a renaissance fair. Let's, let's take all the local merchants, all the friendly vendors we've met. Let's put their stuff in our store and, you know, make it like a gaming tavern. Make it a place where you can get snacks and drinks and it looks like a, a medieval tavern. And I love okay. Dungeons and Dragons. So I, I, I love other game stores, but they don't. D and D every night. They only have like Ventures League maybe one night a week. And I was like, I want D and D every night. So that's that's the origin of the tavern. Okay, so you didn't want to just sell products as much love and care as you put into these products. You wanted to give people experiences. You mentioned about building a culture and creating this place to congregate. And you know, selling products is just like a byproduct of that. You know, it's nice that it happens, but it's really about building this fellowship, this camaraderie, and this excitement of coming in every night and playing D&D. So what is, what is the vibe in your tavern on, an, on your average night? Boy, I, thank you for, for saying, because that's, that's absolutely the heart. That's why our business is called We Geek Together, is because, yeah, it's supposed to be a place where we can all be and geek together and share in our, our nerdy passions. And so when you come in on a night, it kind of feels like a really cozy tavern. Like you definitely have your groups playing D and D there's kind of a lounge area where you can sit down and relax. And, you know, we have a locally brewed non-alcoholic meat. So you can grab a bottle of mead while playing with your friends. So it so it's delicious and i'm not sponsored by the mead so i can say that in full honesty it is delicious oh. it it's liquid gold it's so good Ooh. 
you've got a great vibe going on. Now, I came into uh, the tavern about nine days ago and on the 22nd, and things were different. Holy cow. What happened on the 22nd? So, yeah, April 22nd, I'll never forget. So we, you, Johnny and I, we all set the world record for the biggest game of D&D ever played. And we, it wasn't just the tavern. We had taken over the entire mall. We had table to table, wall, one side to the other. And it was, it was, it was beautiful for us. There was, it was, and in the tavern, it was, it was swamped. I felt pretty bad for my, my employees here because they, just blinds the entire time, but it was, mm-hmm. it was, it was really special. Hey, so Guinness world record. How many people do we have again? Yeah. 1,227 people. And of course I got to keep the plaque handy. This is, oh, you've got it framed and everything. Beautiful. Yes. I might have dropped it a few times, so we won't say that, <laughs> but it's pretty cool. It's got to be protected now. Yeah, that was that was such a fun event. Electric throughout the entire mall. We had people chanting and rolling dice at the same time. And people swarmed the stage at the end to see the final conclusion. Thank you. Thank you for letting me be a part of it. Now, you, the tavern's been open for less than a year. Correct. And when you opened it, you already had plans in place to set a world record and have these massive, massive events. Why so ambitious in the first year? That great question. So we open up our store and well, the idea for the, the world record happened like a long time ago, like eight years. I was telling a good buddy and my wife, I was, I was telling them it would be so cool to play in a game of D and D that was a war. Every table was a different area on the battlefield. That would be so cool. And, uh, and you know, it's just one of those shower thoughts you know you just Mm -hmm. have so many fun cool ideas but when we got into the mall the mall said hey by the way if you guys ever want to do anything with the mall if you guys want to ever use the floor you can you know obviously you have to get a green light from us but uh Mm -hmm. that's something we can talk about and then i remembered that that crazy idea i had i'm like oh no we could we now have a venue we now have a physical location we can now start really getting the word out. And in that time, my TikTok page had really started to get some traction, which was TikTok is a great D&D community mm-hmm. and uh, super nerdy. I love it. And uh, so we, we made some videos that they went, you know, semi-viral, like 100,000 for a small business. Is, that's wow. a lot of views on your page, on your TikTok. So we, we got some traction. So we're like, all right. It's possible that the train is now in motion. <laughs> we'll see if it's a train. <laughs> Those poor shoppers who came into the mall that day just looking for a pair of shoes and were just overwhelmed. We probably traumatized some grandmas for sure. Or maybe converted them to pod, right? So you mentioned having a great relationship with the mall. And in my, I'm a business owner as well. And I love, you know, studying trends and, making predictions malls were kind of dying a few years ago they weren't as popular as they were in the 80s and the 90s and of course covid killed a lot of malls killed Mm -hmm. a lot of retail stores and i've noticed this shift to experiences you see more escape rooms you see more taverns you see why why do you think there is are malls going through a renaissance right now are they just shifting and adapting as someone who works in a mall now and and came into it after the bulk of the pandemic what's your insight that's that's really interesting yeah because i'm pretty sure had we pitched this idea five years ago we wouldn't have been able to get in because yeah i think i think you're right malls have taken a hit especially with everything you said and so now i feel like there is a mark for new ideas, experiences, new blood in, in the space because it's stagnant. You know, you need, you need some new ideas. You need some new, mm-hmm. new businesses to, to bring to life a space. And so I think the Provo Mall actually 
has been trying to adapt. And I wouldn't be surprised. In fact, I know of another mall in New York who sent out an invitation to us and they said, hey, when you want to, we would love to open up your store here in New York. And they're right off of the, the ferry. Like you get oh, off wow. the, the mall is right there. And they said, we can't do that right now. We're, we're, we have no clue what we're doing. <laughs> but the fact that other malls are seeing this, and I know there's even a, a mall in Sandy or Southtown where level one gamers, it's another D and D nerdy community, but they're opening up their own kind of gaming space. And so like, yeah, I think we're, we're seeing a renaissance with businesses. So really interesting. So tell us more about the other local businesses in this mall, because Provo Town Center has been taken over by nerdy local businesses, and I love it. So when you go to the Provo Town Center, don't just go to Geek Together. Check out the other places. What should people check out? Oh, man. So I, I love Drawn to Dragons. They're the ones who did all the art for the world record and is amazing. Then there's the Nerdy Wolf. Jim and his group of people, we met them in Evermore. We work with them in Evermore. There's a lot of other people like Frontline Foam. They, they 3D print Nerf blasters, which is really cool. There is the Rift, and they are an AR experience where you use your phone and you can see a different world through your phone. So, and, and that's, that's like the super nerdy stuff. Like there's, there's some really cool stuff. There's, a, there's now an arcade and a new candy shop. So there's, mm -hmm. there's a lot more stuff. Yeah, every time I go visit you in the tavern, my wife tells me, Good, buy me some candy. Buy me some freeze-dried candy. <laughs> she loves it. She loves your store, too, but you know, you. Where's her heart is at. What is the Provo Town Center Mall missing? What do you, what niche do you think still needs to be fulfilled to make it, you know, this ultimate paradise of awesome nerdiness? Man, that's, that's, I'm hoping we're that, I'm really hoping we are, because, Spoilers, we're opening up another section of our game store, okay? And we're going to hopefully, no, we are going to cater to a lot more different games and different communities with that. I know of another store that's opening soon, and they're offering on-demand recording rooms where you can go in and record your own podcast, or you can record your own audio, and it, it should be pretty, pretty budget-friendly, so... They waited until after I had this all set up before they start <laughs> making it easy. Dang it. Of course. <laughs> of course. Well, awesome. That's very cool. I love coming in to visit. Let's, let's get back to the road to the Guinness World Record. Because you came in, a lot of great ideas, a lot of big ambitions. You wanted to create a community. What are the steps you need to take to set world record? So the very first stuff we had to do was get in contact with Guinness. All right. Um, and this is, this is public knowledge. You go to their website, mm -hmm. you fill out an application, and then somebody will reach out to you and you'll figure out details. And then they'll either say, hey, yeah, this is possible, or we're going to have to rework it, or we're not going to work with you. So the, 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 before we even announced it, we had to get the green light. Is this actually possible? get us here mm -hmm. and we got the green light they said yeah yeah we can do it you need 500 people to be there and uh, you, you can get the world record 500 we laugh at that now but like we didn't know we 500 at the start so so cool we got guinness guinness is on board you had to raise a ton of money and i'm not gonna talk numbers but we saved a lot of our money for we opened and it was pretty much all going into the world record even before we, we had been saving up. And then you had to get the word out. And that was a huge challenge because we're no, we're a small mom and pop. And, you know, we have a TikTok with less than 10,000 people following and a Facebook with 300 people following. So we're, we're brand new in the community. Not many people know about it. This is honestly the most magical part to me about the whole thing is we just started telling people anybody who come came into my store i would just say hey we're doing this april 22nd and we're just i was one of those people you were exactly i was <laughs> and and johnny was and, and it was just like word just got out word of mouth that there's so many people who like 
they heard it from a family member or from a friend or, you know, it was shared one person in your D&D group heard about it. So they shared it with the whole D&D group. And so that's so magical that the D&D community is so wanting to share and wanting to celebrate and wanting to help. So that, that, that was amazing. Eventually had so many people talking about it, so many people interested in it, so many people who were already marking the date on the calendars. It was, you've passed the point of no return. People are going to show up whether you were ready or not. When did that hit? So that was always my mentality at the start of the project. Even before I met you and Johnny, I, as soon as I got the green light from Guinness and the mall, I was like, we're going to do this. Even if only my mom and my father show up, like, we're going to, we're going to go as hard as we can and we're going to have it. <laughs> and then it really didn't, it really didn't feel like it had serious traction until I saw we had 500 people registered on the website. And that, then I was like, okay, I think, I think we can actually do it. You know, even, even Very if cool. only half of those people show up, 250 people show up, like, like that's something. Yeah, that, that's something huge. Now, as a, as a small business owner myself, I realize that there's a temptation to do everything alone. You know, there's that mentality of if you want it done right, do it yourself. And, <laughs> yeah. you know, when I started my business, there was a lot of, you know, elbow grease, and pulling myself up on my bootstraps. And it was, and it was tough. And I'm sure you've had that temptation as well to do it all yourself. But I've noticed that you have a fantastic team in the store and you recruited a lot of people to help with this event. When did you realize, hey, this is this is bigger than me. I need to bring in a team. What am I looking for? OK, yeah. So I mean, it's in the name Geek Together. It well, is. It'd be yeah. ironic if it was just you. Absolutely. And, and my family is spectacular. The support I get from my mom and brother, my brothers and my sisters and my dad. And my wife, of course. Hello, honey. I know you're going to watch this. So I love you. <laughs> yes. So, so great. I got a great foundation. And then it was just a lot of people who would come up to me, like you, like Johnny, who said, Yeah, this sounds crazy, but I come in to want to be a part of it. And <laughs> so, I, so my background is I came from fast food. I worked nine years seven of those years as a general manager in a fast food restaurant. And I have learned very painfully that I need to be able to work with other people. I need to be able to rely on other people, trust other people and, and give them, you know, what they're willing to, to take. And otherwise you can't, yeah, there's no way you can do it yourself. And while that was at the very start of the project, I was like, if need be, I will write it all and I will do all the ads and I will make all the connections and I'll be the head dungeon master. I, the project would have never been as good as it was had you and John not stepped in. Like, it would have been way, way worse. I, there's no way I could have done it without you guys and all the other fantastic people who volunteered. Like, I had people here both nights, Friday and Saturday till like midnight, taking down chairs, taking, setting up tables. And these are like, these are people who just out of the kindness of their hearts, because I, we're a small business. I, I don't have a hundred employees to put on Van X. So it was amazing. You mentioned me and Johnny. I, I think it was the three of us who were kind of the trinity of this event, trying to make it come together with our different specialties. True. Mm -hmm. How did the project change once Johnny came on board? How did that reignite the creative process and help, oh, man. And help it grow? Yeah, and, uh, I could have done it without Johnny. It was so funny because I'm telling people about this project. And then uh, my brother comes up to me. like, Some guy just dropped off a whole binder about <laughs> how they would run your project. And I looked through the binder and it was pretty much like note for note. All of the ideas of how to execute it that I had come up with, he had come to this conclusion. So I was you like, had shower thoughts. He had a binder. Yeah, exactly. Like he, he had, he had it all on paper while I had just kind of, this was my working thoughts. And so 
all right, I need to talk to this guy because they sound just as crazy as I do. And so I called him in and we talked for a bit and I was like, oh yeah, Johnny seems like an awesome person. I can really connect with him. I absolutely would love to work with somebody with his ambition on this project. And then, and then the same thing with you. You came in a few times and you were talking about how you run your own business and you're, you're a dungeon master for hire, which is, that's a dream for me. Like that, that's so cool. And you were like, I could be your head dungeon master. And I was like, oh, dang, like somebody with that much experience and that much knowledge, that, that could be huge. And so it's, it, it added so much that I myself didn't, I couldn't have provided. And so once Johnny and I came in, what was your role from there? Because you knew someone else was going to be on stage. Someone else was going to be writing the packets. So that freed you up to focus on more of the logistics and the business side of things. So what did you jump into at that point? Boy, so yeah, I, I, cause I studied a decent amount of film. So I kind of viewed myself like Johnny was kind of like the writer slash director. You were kind of like the, the lead actor also director, and I was kind of like the producer. So when I was able to offload those, those things to you guys, I could really just focus on production. Do we have a cool stage? Does our sound system work? It didn't work that good, but we tried <laughs> hard. I worked with it. I tried to William Shatner it up as much as I could so the echoes wouldn't you know overlap with me. that. I, we worked so hard on that. That sound system, you know, but a good learning curve, but, uh, but yeah, like, and, and a big part, cause again, it, you know, I hate to have to look through it as a business perspective, but like, we put in all this money, would it be uh, something that we could get money out? Of? And so like, I had to make sure like, was, was this something that wasn't shut down our business because we had invested so much, you know, we would go bankrupt next week. So making sure word of mouth got out, making sure sponsors were lined up, making sure the tables were going to arrive on time, chairs, food, does everyone, the mall staffing for this. We have the extra security, all the extra safety equipment, janitors. There was, there was so much boring stuff. Producer, you know, you know, that's what producers do. You know, you, you're the glue that puts all the crazy people in the same room and there you go. They make something awesome. So how many people do you think were involved in making this project happen outside of the 1,227 cool. who were playing? Like, yeah, like we count the 1,227. I, I would easily say that another, another probably at least 100. Because I know we had like, like 25 volunteers show up for stuff. We're talking about different businesses that volunteered their time, their money, their people. Drawn to Dragon spent a long time finishing up all the arts, the whole mall, their their management team, uh, their their security, their cleaning teams, all of the employees at all the different food court stations who had to have extra employees for that day and extra staff. There was a lot of work that went into this. And because it was in a mall, a lot of those people were already baked into the venue. And so that was nice and super convenient and, and makes them all a great place for something like that. Yeah. Low key malls are sleep really cool places. To <laughs> yeah. yeah. Malls are, they're a haven for nerds. I absolutely <laughs> love it. So the big week, the big yeah. week comes. Johnny has written his packet. I'm doing my own thing, right? I'm getting prepared. I'm working on the voice. I am, you know, I, I'm advertising as much as I can. I'm making sponsorships. I'm trying to bring other businesses in as well to help you out. I'm running a booth that my, my wife and my assistant were at. So, you know, everything's in full swing. It's that final week. What's going through your mind? What, how are you feeling? Oh man, it was so overwhelming. My poor family, like the two weeks leading before then I was. I was inaccessible and in a pretty stressed out mood. I, you know, my wife, would, we'd go out to dinner and all I would just want to talk about is like all the things I have to do for the next few days. And she's like, just 
just eat your food and relax just for a moment. I know it's crazy stressful. So yeah, it was, it was just stress <laughs> for two weeks. <laughs> I mean, it was a good stress because, you know, it's a dream and you're working yeah. for something awesome. But like at the same time, you have that fear of like, oh, it's going to be a train wreck and everybody's going to show up and it's going to be terrible or nobody's going to show up and you're going to just die. It's like you don't know what's going to happen. So there's a lot on your shoulders as the producer, as the main guy making this happen, as the one who had the biggest financial stake from this event as well. Like that is huge. Me, I was able to slot this on a weekend and make sure I didn't book any other games. But I was running other games. I was doing other things. But you, like everything, was on the line for this. That, that's huge. How was it the morning of when you got there and people had showed up and there were chairs and there were tables? Like, what changed at that moment? Nothing. <laughs> still stressed. Still, I mean, like I, I didn't breathe until. <laughs> Like, like, cause yeah, we got to get people in chairs. We got to get dungeon masters to places. And like during the last half hour, dungeon masters had it showed up. And so like, I'd get people running up to the table. My dungeon master's not here. And so then we're like calling other dungeon masters who had walked and we're like, go to table 35 and Johnny's team and your team was excellent. Cause you guys took a ton of the burden away. You guys solved a lot of the problems and then whatever big problems couldn't be solved, you know, that was my job. And so. I was making sure, okay, the sound guy, he, he's watching the stage and he, he knows when to turn on the microphones and our register systems, those are all working and my employees are in place and they've got all their stuff and they can take their breaks. And, and the kid that puked on table 35, I got to go help that ready. It happened? No, luckily. But <laughs> like, so I was just, my job was to make sure things ran and butter smooth for the whole event. So mm -hmm. that's, I, you know, which... I was super, I'm super happy that that's what I got to do as well as it really did run smooth. The community, the dungeon masters and the tables, they were so well behaved. The mall even came up to me afterwards and they were like, look, we've never had an event this big, but much, a lot of our smaller events, the people who go, come there are a lot more rowdy and messy and rude. And this is the biggest event we've ever had and also the best people we've ever had at the event. So like, the the D and D community, the nerd community is amazing because they made this way less stressful. Like, I don't know if I could ever run like a football, you know, a football party or something. Cause that probably could get wild. I can definitely, <laughs> I can do a D and D party any day. Of the week. So the mall loves you. You've built this great relationship them you've established this trust and i'm sure they want you back for more events yes yeah we definitely are going to be doing this very let the day out 20 seconds i know you were you were doing a lot you were putting out fires you were anticipating fires that luckily didn't didn't burn it did go fantastically smooth what were some of the highlights for you that day um, when you started getting that payoff and you realized that this was worth it Oh, there, there, there was so much about the day that was absolutely amazing. The moments where, cause I got, I did a lot of walking around and to see everyone with smiles on their faces, rolling dice, playing D and D at their own tables, people were dressed up, people were having fun. The dungeon masters were really getting into it. The you and Janie on stage, you guys were amazing, but just just feeling all of the fun, all of the fun, all the, the good memories, the happy times that everybody was having right there because we had all put this project together. That was absolutely where I was like, yeah, it, this was 100% worth it. I would love to do this again because... We just, we just had a great day with a thousand plus people. And that's, that's, that's amazing. There are a lot of people talking in the comments right now. We have people too. Yeah. I don't have a chance to share all of them, but there is one that I want to share. I'm going to bring it up on the screen. Would you, would you read this for us? 
Yeah, that's my wife. Yay, let's do it again. I'll support you, honey. She, right, we officially have her approval <laughs> and her permission to do it again. She's a very patient woman with me. And she's a big nerd, and so that's why I love her. So. <laughs> love it. I love it. So we did it. We did it. We did it. We got the record. It was electric. It was exciting. It was like this volcano of emotion that all erupted around the stage. So many people were involved. It was so many people. Go ahead. Deafening, like standing yeah. on the stage and people were cheering. It was like, holy cow. <laughs> it was so cool. People are already asking what's next. And I've been asking what's next. I don't know <laughs> either. I've got, I've got my stuff going on, but I'm looking forward to new collaborations, new things like that. So for everyone listening and whoever, everyone who's going to be downloading the podcast, they heard it here first. What's coming up? Boy, what, there's, there's so many things in store for We Geek Together. We just started season two of the D and D games. So the D and D games we play in store were connected to the final dead wars and the players who played here, they got to level up their characters and get cool loot and shape the story that we eventually got to play out. The players here summoned Eldath. Like they were the ones who brought Eldath in and put all the key places in for that final battle. We just started season two getting ready for the eventual next year, the big. And so have the adventure. It's already written. I, I made wanted signs um, for, for the, the bad guy who's in this one. So that's really cool. So people can already start being the, the next. And yes, we really want to do an next. I was already talking to them all because I think we could have 3,000, maybe 5,000 people. For an event like this like that sounds ambitious but a thousand sounded ambitious last time and we we blew that out of the water so i and we're getting a lot of great feedback stuff that we can improve on so so we're we're looking forward to next year and we'll open up the space next to us and and not just D D, but i'm really excited about all the other stuff that's coming out in the ttrpg community you know, I'm now official partners with Darrington Press. Yes. Their work. Thank you, Dax, because you were, you told me about that. I just bugged you about it until you did it. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I and, just uh, and they've got a new system coming out. So we're going to have the system here in the store the second it comes out. And oh, yeah. Hey, so what should people do between now and next? Okay, so listen to the previous episode on Dungeons and Dax. We can create timeline with Johnny and Dax talking about how the project went together. Come Next on. episode is going to be with Jamie, who played Eldath. Yes. Oh, she did such a good job with Eldath. Oh, I was so happy. She was great. Yeah, so so stay tuned to Dax. Stay tuned to Johnny because they've got some awesome stuff. Come into the store, shape the the world that's going to lead up to the next adventure, and uh, and and yeah, just come and have fun, you know. Play some games. <laughs> you mentioned that you have dungeon masters in the store that run games for people, and a lot of times connect into these larger events. What are you looking for in dungeon masters at your store who play games in person? Great question. And actually, we're looking to expand our dungeon master team. So if anyone's interested, the biggest things I look for in my dungeon masters are, are you inclusive? Can you read a table and see that players are engaging with your game and your world? And if not, how do you pull them into it? Are you, do you provide a safe space where people feel comfortable playing? And if there's a player at the table who's kind of making it not safe, do you know how to to turn it into a safe space and, and to refocus? And are you excited about the game? Because you set the, as a dungeon master, you set the tone for the table. And if, if it's just, you know, a job or something that you just clock in and do, you don't have much enthusiasm. But if, if you are like, dang, you know, I love Dungeons and Dragons or TTRPGs that don't want to share, 
the players feel that excitement. And yeah, that that's that's pretty much you don't have to be Matt Mercer. Heck no, not Matt Mercer. And, but you know, that enthusiasm, that closeness, that's that's mm-hmm. it's all part of the culture that you're trying to build that be together, which I love. I love it. Do you have any final questions for me? Oh, I have so many questions. <laughs> even like, like if, if I, what, what, what do you, what do you think could have, what were your highlights and, and, and what, what do you think could have done better for as a dungeon master at a look at any table? How, how could we have reached and provided more to that? I have so many questions, but yeah. Okay. So what was your highlight? What, so what, I'll say when I first came into the project, what I wanted to do and what I wanted to spend the majority of my time doing was visiting tables as different NPCs, as Vecna, and stir up some chaos. But as we got more involved with it, I realized if we have 200 tables, I'm not going to be able to make very many appearances. And there, I didn't expect being on stage as much as I did because we... I was doing announcements. I was I was running scenes with Eldath. There was at least one point when you went on the microphone and you're like, Vecna, come to the come to the stage. We need you. Where are you, Dax? Stop eating. Not in those words. So I was doing a lot of running around. So I didn't get to make as many appearances as I would have liked. Because I love looking at I love looking into people's eyes when they're playing. I love being able to read their emotions and their engagement especially during death saving throws like death saving throws are the most exciting part of the game for me so i would have loved to do that but we kind of anticipated that my time was going to be stretched pretty thin and so that's why i brought in this team of captains this team of generals who were going to basically cause chaos in the name of dax throughout the entire thing but also support and help because we didn't want them to upstage any of the dungeon masters or steal their story we wanted to you know give them supplements and we created a playing card system where dms could opt in to that sort of help and support and you know those curveballs that they could throw in and my captains did such a great job it was Um, amazing it was (laughs) and i chose them from people that i'd worked with previously whether it was in plays or in writing groups or in other DD projects people who I'd seen their work ethic. I've seen, you know, how inclusive they were. And I saw them work well together as a group. And so I brought them together. That was my, you know, Avengers initiative, calling everybody in. And so what I want to see more of is more of these sorts of core groups forming of employees and volunteers who come together to help help it become even more ambitious and help us reach those ambitions. I had a lot of ideas, but when I brought my captains in and they started building on those ideas it it got bigger and i realized okay the tables are going to be taken care of the dungeon masters are going to be supported even if i can't be there someone else is going to be there for me and that made it really easy for me to go around and i would talk to the captain be like hey what's the vibe in this area they're like oh they're doing great this table did this this table's dead super great awesome how's this table doing Well, they didn't hear any of the announcements and they don't know what's going on. And then I knew, okay, I'm going to make the announcements personally. I'm going to shout at the top of my lungs and get everyone involved. And I think we did that. Yeah, I think we did that. And that was awesome. And that's what I want to see more of is those key volunteers showing up, not just my captains, not just Johnny's moderators, not just your staff, but getting these core people in who will dream as big as we do. Yeah. That's what I want to see more of because you're already doing so well getting these people at attracting them, Andrew. So I, oh man, where, where's Geek Together going to be in five or 10 years? Oh, if we right. keep doing things this ambitious, going at this rate, getting this many amazing people involved. What, what's next? What's, what's down the road in five or 10 years? The future, the future looks bright, man. I'm so excited and humble. I, the support from everyone seriously Ah, it's gonna be great i mean store in new york maybe someday who knows (laughs) other franchises soon you'll have your empire soon you will own the mall you will own all the malls all right i will say my 
my goal is to first become the best game store in Utah. And I love all the game stores in Utah. That's not me talking down. That's me challenging myself as a brand new game store. I'm an underdog. Boy, do I, I want to become the best game store in Utah. And then United States. And then we'll see about the rest of the world. But, but <laughs> do I have ideas and dreams? Hey, excellent. Well, thank you so much for being on the Dungeons and Dax podcast. It has been an absolute pleasure. Can't wait to come in again. I'm just so happy that I live 10 minutes away. Right. It was just so convenient isn't the right word. It was fortuitous. It was serendipitous. It destiny. Was destiny. Yes. It was destiny. So everybody listening in, everybody watching, you have, you've heard of how destiny brought us to this point. And when we take over the world, historians will look back at this at this podcast and we we've hit a ma major milestone in this podcast i've been joking in our first three episodes that someday i will have dozens of fans and there are exactly 12 people as soon as i say yes. that it drops down from 12 people watching this live hey, to 11. One point, we had it we had it at one point a dozen fans yes. we'll get to dozens and it will keep exploring and keep growing thank you so much andrew thank you for everyone listening in and thank you uh, go ahead no, just thank you. It's, it's been great working with you. It's been great on the podcast. It'll be great continuing to work. I love it. All right. See ya.